Okay, let's see if that'll work. Probably need to put a couple more books there. Let's see, how can I do that? I misplaced my stand. Hi. Let's see what I, can I use? How you doing? I can get it up higher. Hello, hey. Good evening. Come on in, guys. I'm in here two minutes early. Thank you for coming in. Let's see. Go to YouTube. Hello. So I wish I could get that up a little higher. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Hello, Sheila, Wheeler, Sheila Wheeler, how you doing? Good evening. Hi, Cheryl Taylor, Shawana Ruth. I am Janet Alexis, Karen Witherspoon. Hi, Debbie Epps, good to see you. Hi, Barb Brownlee, Teresa Widner, Widner, Teresa Widner, Helena Tyler. Emilio, how you doing? Good to see you, Emilio. Hi, Lady Isle. Hi, Shasha O'Hara. Hi, Hoyt Robinson, Indiana Backyard Gardener. Hello. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Gilda Smith. A. Fisher Frontier Farms. Hi. How you doing, Quintella? Maureen Chavis is here. Lisa Williams. I think I spoke to Erica Jones already. If I didn't, hello. Hello, Bless Two. Hello, Susie. Susie. Yeah, I just got your order off. I didn't know. I emailed you to see if you wanted me to send some of those items to a different address. And since I didn't hear from you back, and I did put on the email, um, if I didn't hear from y'all, ship it to that one address. I hope that was okay. And you have a, a credit for shipping. And I'll email you tonight after the chat. Hello, Gardner99. Hello, Yankee sister. Hello, Lady Dagger status. Everything homemade with Ellie, Ellie Leah or LA. Neem uh, Bo Green. Bless two, Erica Taylor. And I think you all just speaking to each other. Thank you all for coming in. First thing I want to say is if you want to join my Facebook group, please answer the questions. I don't respond when somebody doesn't answer the question. So I hope you guys are not offended if you tried to get in and you didn't answer the questions. And that way I can like weed out people that really don't want to be there or people there for drama or whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm not about that. And then the second thing I want to say is somebody is going to win this book by the end of the evening. And I'm not going to be on here long because my allergies are acting up a little bit and 
this book, believe it or not, during the first peak of the pandemic, this book was as high as $170 from a merchant on Amazon. Now, you know, a lot of people go on Amazon to sell their stuff. So a lot of times Amazon has nothing to do with the prices unless it's just something despicable. But anyway, there was a nice lady by the name of Lady Sapphire who contacted me and she was able to uh, purchase three of these books for me and I sent her the money and shipping and handling. And I think I told you guys about it, but I said when it got, got closer to Christmas, I was going to give one to my daughter and then some lucky person uh, in this live and I'll do it tonight. Also, I want to say that, uh, let me look at the schedule, the, 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 um, the uh, calendar. I will be back here next Monday night on the 14th, but I won't be in, uh, I won't be in the live chat on the 21st. That's right before Christmas, but I will be back on the 28th if the Lord says the same and. And I'm feeling good and everything is fine. Sylvia says she got the book on eBay for $12. Cool. I think that's where she got it about that much at uh, Walmart. And so I said, wow. You, she was so sweet to go out in the middle of the pandemic, you know, when everybody was really, well, maybe I should just speak for myself. I was really afraid to go anywhere. I was one of those people that made myself sick, not sick, but irritated my lungs by using too much bleach and disinfectant. Because at that point, we didn't know if it was airborne or if it could survive long on surfaces. So I started ordering everything and having it delivered, even potting soil, potty mix for my emergency garden that I did. You guys know about all of that. I uh, started in the spring and just really wrapped it up um, with the sweet potatoes not too long ago. But anyway, uh, I was wiping down everything, all my surfaces, scrubbing the floors, wiping everything that came in a box. And I used so much bleach and uh, that I kind of burned my lungs a little bit. And at one point, it was so bad I thought I had COVID, but praise the Lord, everything was fine. Oh, so Sylvia said that this book has gone up. It costs more now. And Maureen Chavis says she found it, or it's at a Ace, Ace Hardware for $9.99. Thank you guys for sharing that because that's what it's all about. We're all here to support and to help each other, okay? So I've been talking a lot about greenhouse growing. I've been talking a lot about in the last three, four months growing seeds in your grow room or your greenhouse. And I also talked about uh, what plants and crops to grow during the winter. But I'm going to talk just very briefly on something that I've seen. I'm going to touch on something that I've seen on YouTube. I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit higher. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you would know it'll fall when I'm on live. <laughs> I think that'll get it up a little higher. Yeah, that's better. Um, something that I've seen a lot on um, YouTube channels of gardeners who don't have a lot of experience, and that's fine. And also on Facebook group, including my own. And by the way, if you're interested in my Facebook group, it's the same name as my YouTube channel. Lady Shiro's Organic Food, Forest, and Products. And I see people put posts like, what am I doing wrong? My crops are still real small. Or my crops... Uh, didn't survive the frost or freeze. And the key to that, and that's what I have been drumming into uh, everybody that come into these lives, is to start early. 
Crops grow incredibly slower in cooler temperatures. And you must have them at a decent size, a mature size, before a freeze comes, unless you're planning on putting a PVC hoop house with greenhouse plastic on it. And I'm not talking about that painter's plastic that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's. That doesn't really keep your plants that much warmer. You really need to get a heavier plastic and make sure that your plants do, do not come in contact with the plastic. So if you happen to be one of those people who have real, real small seedlings in your garden and you have freezing or below freezing temperatures, I recommend that you, one, go and cover them up. Two, going forward, plant those crops in July and August. You saw the seedlings that I started outside in July. I shared with you that it got too hot and they were burning up and I brought them inside of my grow loom and put them under a very inexpensive shop light with 32 watt bulb. And every Monday night I would come on here and I would show you how they were growing to eventually I planted them outside. But I planted them outside the last of August, 1st of September. Okay? So my greens are a real nice, healthy size, and I didn't have to put them under or put plastic over them. Okay? So be patient. If your seedlings are very small, cover them up and just know that they're not going to grow that much during the winter. They're going to start jumping in the spring. I have some greens that I picked tonight with a very dear friend, Monica, and I videotaped some of it, and I'll probably uh, upload it tomorrow or the next day. Um, I have some of my uh, mustard greens are bolting because I planted them so early. Okay, so now I'm going to go and take a look at some of the questions. Those are the two things I wanted to talk about the garden. Then we're going to move on to canning. So I'm going to go back to Lady Owl. Lemon essential oil is great also, but I'm like you bleached everything down, especially with little ones bleaching. And water ratio in the spray bottle also helps. Yeah, but in order for me to heal, because I was leaning, literally leaning on the floor. I would take everything out the box and Home Depot would come. The potting mix was, was in a bag. And they would leave it at the front porch, and then I would bring it in. And I was literally on the floor, real close to the surface, inhaling it while I was wiping it down. So I had burned my lungs a little bit. So I had to completely get away from bleach. And I haven't, I haven't used any, because uh, the virus can be killed with just regular dish soap or alcohol disinfectant. It won't burn your lungs like that bleach will. And uh, my brother was using pine soil, real concentrated, and the same thing happened to him. He said, girl, I thought I had COVID, because he had ended up going to the hospital. Because he and his wife had just came off of a cruise. I think it was March when, when then everything hit the fan. And he really thought he had COVID, but what it was, it was too much pine soil, too concentrated. And, and in me, it was bleach. Okay, Sylvia wants to know, where can you get a reasonably priced greenhouse? I, I did on what on eBay. I bought uh, my first greenhouse. It was one of those flower mound hoop houses. And I paid like four times as much as I paid for one twice the size. Like a uh, high tunnel or a low tunnel, high tunnel, yeah. And uh, in the Texas heat, I can't use the covers on them all year round because it's too hot and they will start uh, decomposing and cracking and breaking. So I buy a new cover every year. 
I'm hoping this year I may be able to get two years out of this one. So, yes, check eBay. And if you can bid on one, it would be great. The only thing about those high tunnel type of greenhouses, you have to anchor them pretty good because the winds can come and whip them away. And, you know, and I've seen them mangled on the Internet. Mm hmm. OK. Hi, Crystal's Pets and Plants. How you doing? Blessed 2 is here. Brenda Allen. OK. Good to see you. Angela. How, how you doing? Stinky Poodle Putty Puddle Ranch. I love that name. And now I see a question. How can I get info about the upcoming Texas Hibiscus Seminar? And thanks for shipping my seeds. Okay. I remember your name because um, I remember shipping your seeds. Uh, but I don't know if it's Alicia or Alicia. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But we're all going to grow the seeds together. We will start the first week in January. Right now, you need to just put your seeds in the refrigerator, okay? And we're going to start the first week of January, and you would need a six-pack, you know, uh, where you put the potty mix in, a six-pack potty mix, and I recommend Jiffy. You can use whatever you like. Some people like those uh, pea pellets. I don't because... I'll tell you why I don't like them. I don't like them because when you, they say they're bio, biodegradable, but they aren't. And when you go to peel the paper off, sometimes you, times you um, damage or break off some of the roots. So I don't even fool with it. I like Jiffy C starting mix. You can get it at Walmart for less than $5.99, Home Depot, whatever. And that's it for right now. But once your seeds germinate, you're going to need at least one grow light and a bulb, of course. Or you can use one of those um, inexpensive $19.99 uh, shop light, lights that you get at the uh, big box stores. And if you live in an area or if your house doesn't get real warm, you can purchase a heating pad for plants if you want to. Okay? All right. Oh, Lavender Lady Lady E. Lady E. Lady E. Thank you so much. Okay. So, did I clear up everything about the Texas Star High Biscuits? We're going to grow them together. That's going to be a seminar that I'm going to do. And by the way, guys, let me pull it up real quick. I'm down here. I'm looking at my uh, my notebook. I'm almost certain. Let me put uh, open up the file for the hibiscus seeds. I think we have over 50 people. I think we have over 50 people that I send seeds to. I stopped counting after 44. Yeah, it's about 50, 50 of us are going to be growing that together. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Everything I do, you're going to do. Because we're going to be growing these inside. Now, after, when the spring comes and then you transplant them outside, either in the ground, a container, or whatever you want to do, um, then you're on your own because everybody's environment is going to be different once it goes outside. Okay. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of people that's going to be doing this. Um, for those of you that may be new to my channel and you're new in here tonight, the reason why we're growing the Texas Star Hibiscus is because it is a perennial plant. You can make tea out of the leaves. And I'm a living witness that it does what the scientists and doctors say it's going to do. It will lower your blood pressure. Bless 2 said, do you need an assist assistance? You do so much. Yeah. Um, I do, and I have my granddaughter. Uh, my oldest granddaughter is going to come and help me. And that's why I'm not going to be in Monday night because we're going to be having some last-minute shoppers. And another thing, that is why, because I've been tested for um, Alzheimer's. Uh 
when you get a little older, when you overload your brain with so much, you might think you said fork, but you said spoon. Anybody with me? Anybody in here a senior citizen? Raise your hands in the feed. Or you may say May and you, you meant to say March. Things like that. But Alzheimer's is a little bit different. It's when you walk into a room, you don't know to recognize the room. You don't know how you got in the room. That's Alzheimer's. But if you walk into a room, you go, no, what did I go in there for? That's just old age. And some young people have that issue too. Uh, Short-term memory loss. But as you get older, thank you guys, uh, those of you that are admitting it. As you get older, you're going to remember you're gonna remember me too. I'm going to tell you why I know I'm, what I'm saying is true. My mother said, okay, you just watch. You just wait. You running out of here, taking a shower and running on out to the bus stop or whatever, the train, catch the train or whatever. Don't warm your car up. Nothing on your head. You just wait. When you get a little bit older, you can't do that. And it's the truth. If I go out there and start working like a maniac and work up a sweat and don't have nothing on my head and don't have my cape, that my garden cape that I usually have on, my sinus will start acting crazy. And when I tell you I remember my mother and I said, Mama, you said it and you were so right. Some of the things that you did when you were younger, you're not going to be able to do. Now, that's not to mean that you can't have a rich, full, productive life and be useful Okay, because you can and you could be youthful. But I'm just saying you're going to have to take more precautions. Okay, because you all remember me telling you that I lifted up that tree right behind the screen, that uh, column minding tree. And I said, I was amazed I did it. I did it that earlier that day or the day before. I strained my back. And I had to be very careful for a couple of days. So. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, they did say that. Yeah, mom and them said it. You know, and we go, oh, yeah, they just old-fashioned. But they knew what they were talking about. How many of you seen a preacher get, get really into the, the word and he's preaching? And then somebody either from the nurses guild or the usher department or the pastor's aid uh, ministry, and they'll come and they'll put a... Uh, uh, scarf around him. Sometimes they may switch robes. Yeah, they have to really take care of themselves because if they don't, um, they can get a cold. Okay. She said she started doing more crossword puzzles and playing more chess like my grandma. Yeah, and that's how she improved her memory. Mm -hmm. And see, I don't have to do anything like that because I'm constantly sending out emails, putting stuff. I just started doing Instagram a few months ago and doing Facebook and the group. All the, all the stuff I do in the formulas and it, it keeps my mind very active. Okay, somebody was saying something else I read. It was a very good point. Does every hibiscus plant help with blood pressure? Lady Cheryl, and we are the same age. Yes, Susie. Every hibiscus plant will help, but you have to make sure that it is grown organically. You, you feel me? So the leaves can absorb pesticides. I've seen somebody putting seven uh, dust and seven, all of that stuff. You don't want to be drinking those chemicals in your body, Susie. So you, um, you can grow some tropical hibiscus, depending where you are. If I remember right, you're in Louisiana. You have a warm climate, too. But I know that the Texas hibiscus has worked for me, and I always like to pass on knowledge that has worked for me instead of what somebody told me. And it is very easy to grow. It grows in every type of climate, and the third year that you have it is going to take off. Mine grow 20 feet tall now. Beautiful flowers. You can go back and look at some of my videos. The first couple of years, I kept it up under my gazebo. Guys, I point to where stuff is. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, first couple of years, I kept it under my gazebo. And then 
uh, I put it into my tea garden bed and it just took off like crazy. And hummingbirds love it. I love to see the hummingbirds. Okay. Okay. My grandmother used to say, you may not feel it down, but you will later. <laughs> yes, I know what she's talking about now. Let me tell you a quick little story while I'm going through here looking for questions. Then we're going to talk about it. I see you do that in church. Yes. You can get hibiscus seeds off of eBay. That's where I first got mine. I can't tell you the name of the merchant, but you can try there. How do I... Go about getting, let me go back, seeds to join the grow group I'm new. Um, I think it's abbreviation black, black D dirt or whatever that is. Excuse me for, for mangling it. Um, you can order seeds off eBay, Texas Star Hibiscus Seeds. Make sure you want to get the red ones. Okay. And let's see what else. Maybe I would try and grow some. I love hummingbirds too. Yeah, if you want to know anything about plants, uh, uh, pets, insects, y'all check out Crystal's Pets and Plants. She has a lot of exotic things. Tall, wow, had hibiscus, hibiscus gelato. Mm -hmm. And I and I mix mine up a little bit now. I, me and Bria, we I put a little honey in hers. I've even dehydrated peach um, skins, and I steep that with the hibiscus. And I don't know if you noticed, but the latest crave is peach and hibiscus tea. These companies are making it because my sister said I never even heard of peach and hibiscus until you told me about it, and now I'm seeing it everywhere. Yep. So we can start trends too. And it's very, very healthy for you. Can we follow your hibiscus growers? If we yeah, Stacy, if you purchase your seeds anywhere, you can follow along. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do it because I can do a private video or I can do you know a Monday night chat with everybody. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do it, but I'm not gonna exclude anybody. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait to get started on it, too. Okay. I got a person here that's really trying to help me. You guys need to hit that thumb up button. She's telling you all. My mom said, keep saying good morning. You'll feel the weather. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody asking me, have I ever planted sugar cane? Yes, I have. I've grown it. Uh, I grew it for two years and my, all my grandchildren tasted it. And I am, uh, my mother had diabetes. Her father had diabetes. I am holding, uh, at, what was the last one? This time is really good. 6.3, 7.0, you diabetic. But for years, I was either 6.8 or 6.7. This is the lowest my A1C has been in 12 or 13 years. And that's because I limit my intake of sugar. I was looking over here to show you my monk fruit. It's too far for me to reach. I don't drink sodas. This extra weight I got on me comes from healthy food. Greens and cornbread, that type of stuff. Okay? But I don't eat a lot of sugar. And I'm eating a lot of Greeks. Because, you know, that fat turns to, to, to sugar. Okay? So that's the only reason why I'm not playing sugar cane. Because I just wanted my children to experience it. Like I experienced it as a kid. I wanted my grandchildren to experience it. But I don't need to be growing sugar cane foot to get the sugar. Okay, but I want my children to know that the majority of sugar, granulated sugar, comes from sugar cane. But then I also taught them other stuff like uh, uh, corn syrup, you know, sugar comes from that. And beets, you can get sugar from that. Different things, okay? So I'm not going to be planting any more sugar cane. Some things I planted once, I grew it once or twice just to grow it. For example, if you go back, if you join my Facebook group and you go back and look at all the photos, you can see on there where I grew um, Virginia Jumbo Peanuts. 
and it took a lot of peanuts to roast and grind them up to make peanut butter. But all of my grandchildren were able to experience it. So they, I just want them to know where food comes from. You just don't go to the grocery store and get it. And that Bria, she's smart as a whip because I have retired. I retired uh, just before Bria was born. Yeah, because I used to go to the doctor with my daughter on Monday and the beauty college was closed on Monday. And so I retired right after that. And so Bria is the only grandchild that I've kept as a baby until she went to school. And I was doing a lot of research, so I asked my daughter and my son-in-law, can I introduce her to peanuts earlier? Because I was watching something on Good Morning America, and it said, uh, if you introduce the babies to peanut butter a little bit earlier, maybe they won't have an allergy. And so I did. I just gave her a little bit, you know. So she eats broccoli and will cry before the pandemic if we went to a restaurant and broccoli wasn't on the menu. She loves vegetables. Her brother, Brian, you all know him, not so much. He's doing better, but not like Bria. Bria knows what foods are healthy, and when a child sees you growing a seed, it's a beautiful feeling for them to see it mature and then produce fruit or vegetable, and you let them water it. And you show them everything that you're doing while it's growing. They feel so proud, guys, when they can eat that food. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? And then I'm going to go ahead on and go. I'm going to start talking about candy. Can you get rust rings off? Can you get rust off the rings and lids? No. I, I saw somebody say they use something, but I've never tried. I never could get them off until you, so I just throw them away. And I don't reuse the lids. Let me, let me back that up. I don't can with old lids. I use uh, old lids for dry storage. Uh, you know, if I'm putting something like beans or something like that up that I'm not going to process. Uh, I don't know. You know, bee, I, I, do, I, do, I make jewelry and a lot of bees and things like that. I'll use them, but I don't process them uh, either water bath candy or pressure candy at all. What things would I need to start my hibiscus plant? Sandy Hamilton, I named everything. You can go back in the beginning and watch the real live. And I mentioned everything in the last two or three live videos, okay? Happy holidays, best yet. I bet best yet. If you all want to see somebody that was a canning baby and now is a canning pro, check out Best Yet Journey's channel. She, I'm so proud of you, Best Yet. I mean, she is really doing it. And excuse me. <coughs> She just took off like a bird and just started flying. And she was so nervous during that first canning conference that we had. I think I had to yell at her. You correct me if I'm wrong, Best Yet. Because you don't cut people off. Best Yet will ask you a question before we get to it. I said, Best Yet, just stop. Just stop. Take a deep breath. It's all right. Don't ask me no more questions. I, I, I'm paraphrasing. I said something like that. And she fell out laughing. And then she stopped, and she, she tried it again. I, 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 stop. It's going to be fine. And there's no stopping her now. I've seen her can so much stuff. I've seen her make apple cider vinegar. I mean, <laughs> the, the possibilities are limitless. Once you get that fever and you see how much healthier your food is and how fresher it is, and how you can eliminate words in your food that you can't even pronounce. That they're putting in this stuff to preserve it. Okay? Okay. Oh, yeah. Kimberly, if you harvest some seeds, no problem. You do not have to get the seeds from me. All I was asking for was enough money to send you a professional uh, bubble envelope. So I know that the seeds, when we go through 
the machines at the post office, it won't do something to, that won't let them germinate. And the cost of my professional labor, label and tracking system that I do click and ship right here at here. I don't even have to take them to the post office. I can put them in the mailbox, but I do take them to the post office. So I wasn't selling the seeds. I want to stress that. And some people gave me a couple more dollars, but it was a lot of work because I had to send you an email and, you know, it's a lot of work. Especially when I had orders and I'm saying, boy, I'm just sending these seeds out. I need to be getting these orders fixed. <laughs> okay, Lady Al, thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bria is so smart. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. She is a sweet girl. Thank you, Rhonda. She's a really a sweet girl. Uh, thank you for taking that person out. Uh, they, it won't be an issue anymore. I, I will, um, unless they put another, um, unless they do another, um, another name. We have been really good about people acting nasty in here, trying to discourage us, but that's okay. Okay. Now somebody put a question, but I happen to see it. And Antia just said it, put your questions in all caps. Blacker dirt, I think that's what you that's your name. It depends on what you want to spend. I've talked or helped or assisted people who have a real small presto or a large all-American canner. It's up to you. Uh a lot of people invest a lot of money in things and then they find out they don't enjoy doing it. They're not serious about it. So I don't tell people what to buy. If you want to ask me what do I have, I have all American canner. I bought the top of the line right before I retired. In everything. In my I bought a commercial blender. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying. I bought a nine uh tray Excalibur dehydrator. Um I mean I just bought a lot of stuff, guys. Because I was retiring and I knew that I was going to can more than ever. So, you, hey, Satya, you can, you can can with an inexpensive canner or you can get you a, a good one. Okay? And the good one I recommend is all American canner. But now, Yankee sister says she enjoys her Presto. 20 years ago, I used the Presto. But I'm going to sh share this with you. Now the prices are back down. They had went through the roof. People were hoarding seeds or people were jacking up the prices of canners. You couldn't hardly really find any, in some areas, any mason jars or lids, but now they're plentiful again, okay? Hey, Broke Farmer, nice to see you. So get whatever one that you want. Now, let's talk about canning. And the first thing I want to talk about is there are two types, water bath canning or pressure canning. So hold your questions right now. If you type them, that's fine, but I'm not looking at the screen right now because I want to make sure that I get these basic things about canning that I make it very easy and simple for you to understand. Okay, just some basics. The first thing that I think you all should try to start canning is fruit. Because it is acidic. And anything that is 6.9 or lower on the pH scale is considered acid. And that's why people say that, oh, I can't eat too much, drink too much orange juice because it upsets my stomach, it's too much acid or whatever. Tomatoes are acid, but there are some hybrids that, that lean a little bit toward alkaline. And that's why you still can water bath them, but you need to add lemon juice. 
an acid to bring the pH down a little bit. So all of your fruits and juices, tomatoes with a little lemon juice, and some vegetables that you pickle, that you add 5% vinegar to the recipe, you can water bath can. Any questions so far of what you can water bath can? So my question to you is, since there aren't any questions, let me make sure. I see somebody said they bought a cheap water bath canner last month and it rusted after one use. I was tick. I would take it back if you bought it brand new. I'm gonna take it back unless you left water in it. Cheryl Taylor said that's what I would do. I was just explaining that to someone about things. Before buying things before you retire. Yeah, I bought my, my all the good stuff that I know that I was going to want to want to have. I bought all of that. And my greenhouse, the first greenhouse. Now, where was I? Oh, about the canner and it rusted. You might want to always drain your canner. Most canners have a, a uh, coating on them. I think it's enamel. And it's not supposed to rust out with one use until I'm not saying it didn't. I'm just saying. I don't know what kind of cheap canner you got. Uh, Walmart sells them less than $30. The one that I have, and I've shown it to you in videos, just a little blue aluminum with a little basket. Okay. Uh, it hasn't rusted. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to pick up these questions then I'm going to go get back to water bath candy. Somebody's looking hitting for all America for Christmas, Shante. I hear you. And that uh Presto 23 canner, 23 quart canner, I've taught uh instructed a lot of people with that and and they have no problems out of it. Hello sister Cheryl, I have a pressure cooker. That cans too. Never did it before, but I can't wait to try. Focus on the truth. I've been hearing about those uh, pressure cookers that can and have that feature in them. Lady Al says aluminum with rust versus steel. Real cheap from Walmart. That's the one. Blue aluminum. Hmm. I will look into what you guys say. Okay. Now, but let me say this. Um. About the, about the water bath canning. Follow your recipes to the T when it comes to water bath pickling vegetables like cucumbers or dilly beans, green beans that you pickle or relishes that you make out of vegetables that has a lot of vinegar in it follow it to the t and you have to make sure that you're using five percent vinegar i don't think they make it without that anyway now here's a website i'm getting ready to uh give you guys it's uh food home food Preservation, bookmarks, other bookmarks. I should have had it pulled up. I, my bad. I'm sorry. National Center for Home Food Preservation. Now, you guys know my background is uh, cosmetology, education, bacteriology, sterilization and sanitation, pathogenic bacteria, non-pathogenic bacteria, I'm into that, so I don't do things that some people do. I follow the National Center 
for home food preservation. The things that they say that you shouldn't can, I don't can. And I'm not putting it in the video. There are a lot of people that do. And I'm not going to name names or anything like that. I'm just saying, I don't do it. Okay? For example, I do not can squash because they say don't. Because they say it could be bacteria in those little crevices of the, of the squash and blah, 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 blah. So I don't do it. Uh, they say don't can rice. Don't can pasta and noodles. I don't do it. But I can't tell you all what to do. But I can tell you this. In my video, I made pasta. I made uh, pasta sauce that I canned. And I stir fried some turkey, ground turkey, and with a little olive oil. And then I put my chopped up red peppers and orange peppers and yellow peppers and green peppers, sweet peppers in there. And while I was doing all of that, my pasta noodles was boiling. And in less than 20 minutes, Bria had her lunch. So I don't believe in making the spaghetti up and doing all that all together, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I make pasta with meat in it, but that is not on the acid side of the scale dealing with water bath canning. That goes on to what I'm getting ready to talk about next, and that is pressure canning. Okay? All veggies, all meat must be pressure canned. Now, I see some something moving on my screen, so... I'm going to go real back and get them up. Uh, my mother used a pressure cooker when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, so scared of the unknown. Focus of the truth is once you educate yourself, you won't be afraid. Where's Bess? Yes. Am I right, Bess? Yeah. She was scared to death. She's not scared anymore. Because once you do it, and once you just keep watching the videos and learning and coming into this live or anybody else that has a live about canning, library, videos, once you do that, <coughs> excuse me, the fear will leave you. Somebody said, Black Gerdert said, my grandmother used a pressure cooker when I was younger. My grandmother did too. But now they make them better for you and they know what will kill germs so you won't be uh, having botulism in your foods. You know, that's a silent killer. You, you, are, you all know that, right? You can look at something and it can look all clear and everything in the jar and uh, it still could be contaminated. Now, of course, if it starts getting all cloudy and you see mold or whatever, you're going to throw that out immediately. But there is some pathogenic bacteria where you won't see it or smell it. So that's why you have to distinguish what you can can by water bath method and what you can can or process by pressure canning. But focus on the truth. Don't be afraid, dear. Because they make the canners so easy and safe proof today that you don't have to be afraid of them blowing up. Okay? And I know we've all seen some pictures of catastrophes. But that is rare. And that's when somebody that didn't read the directions, didn't take any classes, didn't learn from somebody, and they put the camera on and then they opened it up and with full force and it blew up. OK, but they have meters on them. They have gear gauges on them. They tell you what the pressure is. And then they have a spigot. Uh, each manufacturer calls it something else that you put on. And then you look at that gear gauge and it gets to the uh, pressure that amount that you want. I may be using the wrong word, but you all know what I'm talking about. It goes from zero to 15 or whatever. Right. 20. And for my altitude it's 10 between 10 and 11. And once you turn that pressure canner off, either gas or electric, that gear gauge is going to go down because it doesn't have a heat source. And when it gets all the way to zero, then you can remove the top off of it and you'll see a little steam or whistling comes out of it. And it's 
it's impossible for it to blow up because there's no pressure at that point. But I do want to say this. If you have a electric stove, cooktop, you, ha you have to check with your manufacturer to see what type of canner you can use on it because the all-American canners are very heavy. I don't pick them up with water in them full. I put the empty canner on the stove and well, I don't have to use the whole gallon, but you know what I'm saying, by a pitcher or a jug. And when it cools off and I'm getting ready to clean my canner, I take a sauce pot, you know, about that deep, with a little handle, and I dip it out and walk to the sink and empty it, go back and forth. Because I'm too old to hurt my back like that, like I used to pick all that up. It's about 40, 50 pounds when, you, when it's full of water. It's heavy when there's nothing in it. But the Prestos are much lighter, and you probably can handle that. But once you get a certain age, you don't want to put extra stress on your body. Okay, now I'm going to go back and get some uh, questions. Quintel Quintella says she's focused, but she's scared too. Okay, Bess, yeah, was the same way, but she's not afraid anymore. Thank you, Shaniqua. Brenda Allen, I use my heavy-duty stainless pot for a water bath can. Yes, you can. As long as you put a towel or something, Brenda, at the bottom. Okay? You can put a towel or you can buy those candy racks. Uh, you can go online, uh, Walmart, Amazon, whatever, and put that rack at the bottom. Just as long as the jars don't come in contact with direct heat, because they will crack. Thank you, Antia, for putting that link. Thank you to the National Center for Home Preservation. Quintella, once you start, it's addictive. You are right. Rhonda Motif, I would love to can soup. My favorite thing to can. My favorite thing to can. Toward the end of the winter, early spring, I get everything out the freezer and just start making soup because I'm gonna need my little space that I have. And uh, right now in my freezer, I have muscadines I'm going to take out tonight because you remember, guys, I told you I was going to start my wine uh, as soon as I got that six-gallon food-grade tub that screws on. I'll go get it. I'll be right back. Can you see it? It's huge. It's food grade. And then it has the little uh, plug here where you can put your siphoning uh, tube in here so you don't get the sediment at the bottom when you're making your wine. And then you see you got your, what do you call it, your um, airlock. And it screws on and off so you don't have um, gnats or bacteria to get into it. I could use the Home Depot bucket and everything, but it's my first time doing it and I didn't want to do all of that. I didn't want to go through all of that. So I'm going to take those grapes, those muscadine grapes tomorrow, and we're going to get started. And we're going to start processing it with the wine. And I told you all last week, I'm not trying to do no fancy, schmancy <laughs> wine. Just cheap, quick, homemade muscadine wine. I'm planning on getting chili this week, can't eat the beans separately. Keep these jokers fed in this house and I don't have to stop what I'm doing. Yeah, but you, you can do chili and beans and meat together though if you want to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, I told you last week I bought it from uh, E.C. Cross, Kraus, C-R-A-U-S-E. And somebody, I think it was Crossing World, told me I must have had everybody going to that site because you said it was it was uh, overloaded or whatever. I will put it in the description box. Okay, let me write this down. 
I will put the name uh, where I got that. And the guy has a lot of sales on. He has books and stuff that he did it. And I get intimidated. That's the word my brother, my 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 uh, son told me I have. He said the only reason why I haven't been trying to do, uh, work the uh, GoPro nine uh, camera bought is because I'm intimidated by it. And he's right. He's right. So I've been working with it. It's a lot of information, but I did at least take some pictures. And this little thing, I mean, it does a lot of stuff, guys. You could be swimming and, and, and doing it uh, underground and, and I mean, just, just a lot. And uh, you can do this all the way to 5K, uh, real high resolution. Only thing I've done is taking pictures. And I was getting ready to go and, and, and take it and load it to my PC. And the SD card, I didn't have a converter. So now I gotta wait for that to come in. Uh, you're supposed to be here tomorrow. And I charged up both of the batteries and I've been playing with it, but I'm gonna get a video this weekend, hopefully, out, off of that new camera. And my son was right. And Shana Na, yeah, she said, I'm gonna give you a little, um, not a little, but a nice little super chat to, for your time. And that just touched my heart and I said, that that next morning I got up early and started playing with it. And I got it. But I just got now gotta get it to my PC. Shana, now let me ask you, what's um do you edit your uh videos on your um your PC or your phone? Because I was using Movie Maker and it's I, I mastered it after five years. But I need to an, another um uh software that I can use or app on my on my PC. And by the way, Shanana, if you all want to see somebody that had a awesome, awesome harvest of turmeric and ginger, you all need to go check out her latest video. I was just amazed. And how much ginger that lady harvested. I mean, she did it, baby. Y'all need to go check it. I have used on my phone, Filmora. Filmora is on your phone or your PC? I got to get off my phone. I, I, I don't have no memory. Yes, best yet. Check out Sean. She said she loved your channel. Sean, I, I, check it out. Hello, Sugar Cane. Oh, on the PC. So... Filmora is on the PC. Okay. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Hi, Ty Lily. Okay. Okay, who say that? Lady Al, yes, the silent killer. And I was told to always double check and push the button at least once a month before cooking with if it smell test the finger test before adding it to other foods. Pressure gauge. Yeah, that's what I was trying to talk about. Remember, I told y'all I've seen you since then. <laughs> right. <laughs> Janice Hyman is asking me about my day. You know, I could be sitting at home all day long and I don't, and I don't talk and then this... My lips don't peel, but as soon as I start yapping, then it goes, starts. That's that's the thyroid medicine I take. Oh, I'm doing good, Janice. Focus on the truth. So she threw her back out along with two babies at 40. I am definitely 
Going to be more careful going forward. Yes, ma'am. Stacy said, is it true that boiling the contents of a jar can kill any pathogen? No, ma'am. Now, Stacy, back in the little house on prairie days, they canned food like that, and they had wood burning stove, and they just kept adding water and adding. They did that, and they made it. But when we learn better, we do better. So you know, the technology is better now. So when you pressure can, you can kill pathogens, um, the majority of them, if you do it for the right amount of time and pressure can what the National Center for Home and F Food Preservation say, yes, you can. I hope I answered your question, Stacy. So in other words, I'm not saying go take some meat, put it in a jar and boil it in a regular pot and you're going to kill the bacteria. That's not going to work. It has to rise to a certain amount of pressure. Okay? Yes, my favorite thing to can is soup. I'm planning on killing, canning chili this week. Okay, you already said that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to post where I got the wine bucket from. Hypercentric and Thai Lily. I'm, I'm going to put it as soon as this video is over. I'll wait, well, you know, let me go to my email real quick. I think it's EC Cross. Hold up one second, guys. Oh, goodness. Oh, yes, I got it. I got it. I got it. E-C-K-R-A-U-S. Dot com. E-C-K-R-A-U-S. Dot com. He's been in business since 1966. I'm glad I didn't delete that for some reason. Okay, and he has all kind of wine stuff on there to make wine and lauder, is that how you pronounce it? Apple cider, um, apple cider vinegar, I mean everything. Okay. All right, let's see if I can make that go up. Okay, so a couple people asked about that. Angela said, here you go with the boom. Oh, no, that was Antia. You're right. I'm, <laughs> I'm canning meat with veggies to serve over rice or noodles. Easy, Mr. Yeah. Yeah, Angela. That's what I did with, with Bria. In this case, I use the pasta without meat, but sometimes when I cook it for her, if I don't have any fresh meat, I will just get my pasta with meat in it. Okay, old school wines. So I'm gonna have fun. I'm the type of person I always, I, I got that after my mother. I'm always trying different stuff, you know, so. This is supposed to be real easy. Man, and I over, ah, let me get back up and show you something else I got. <laughs> I bought this back in the summertime and you put your grapes in or your fruit, any kind of fruit. See it? All of your fruit is going to be in here. You fill your water up and you put that down in there. 
and then it steams it. And then you can just have the juice. Everybody see that? Oops. Oops. That's why I didn't want to get up and get it. <laughs> so, some things I'm going to be making the juice and then just use the juice with the yeast in the future. And some things I'm just going to ferment into the plastic bucket. And I thought all the research I did on the muscadine, and I'm not no expert or nothing on this because, like I said, excuse me, this is my first time doing it. Excuse me. Oh, I'm <laughs> just making sure this little thing didn't fall. Um, like if I want to make apple juice, uh, persimmons or something like that, you know, and I can mash up, uh, then I would use that steamer from Roots and Refuge, I believe. And But for the muscadines, I'm just going to let them ferment. Okay? I'm always working with gadgets. I'm going to get it one more time, and I'm going to show you something, something else. And then I'm going to move on. Then I'm going to move on to pressure candy. I still have a few persimmons that I grew. And you can take them. I'm going to turn this around so you can see inside of that. This is one I got this year. And you put your fruit in. Of course, you know you want to take that off. And you push it in there and then you mash it down. And then you pour the juice out right here. If you want to do like orange juice. Um, I got lemons and limes in the greenhouse, you know, if you want to make lemonade or, yeah, I guess I'll say lemonade, limoncello. Now, you know, you put the peels and you have to screw up that real good. But in my case, it's not going to be an issue because I'm organic and you take those peels and you put them in vodka and you let it absorb that vodka for two weeks. And I've been thinking about do, trying to do that and give it away at, at a nice bottle for gifts. Because last Christmas, my oldest son uh, bought me two wine and cider kits. And I, I haven't done anything with them, but I'm going to use them this year. But they won't get it for Christmas because it takes so much longer. Okay. So any more questions about the gadget and my... Um, Somebody, oh, P. Smith Gardner, she has the muscadines brewing right now. You go, lady. I was on your channel the other day watching something that you did. I can't think of it right now. Y'all go check out P. Smith Gardner. What were you doing? I don't remember right now. Thank you. I meant after it has been pressure canned, and you want to make sure it doesn't contain any passages before you eat it. Can you boil before eating to kill that silent killer? If you pressure can for the right amount of time, you're not going to have it in there. As long as you follow the guidelines of the National Center for Home Preservation. And you're not doing noodles and you're not doing rice and you're not doing um, squash. You don't have to boil it. You can take it right out the jar and eat it. If you would feel more comfortable, by all means. But uh, you don't have to if you if you do it correctly. Hello, Bless Two. I never tried to do homemade wine, but I have been thinking about it. Okay, so I will share my journey with you. You just saw that gadget advertised the other day. Well, let me tell you this: that advertisement is a lie. 
they put, they cut it. They put, they put a, a, a few grapes in there and then they squeezed it and make you think all oh, that it, it, it filled up that wine goblet with grape juice. I did it. And it does not. You have to do it a couple of times to get that much wine uh, 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 juice out of there. Okay. That's the only thing about the commercial. But this is heavy steel. It was worth it. I'm glad I bought it. If I don't do nothing but have fresh orange juice. Uh, I'm glad I bought it. But I'll be there all day trying to squeeze juice to make wine out of. And when I got that, that's when I got the, the big pot and the steamer and all that. And see, guys, you all know me. You haven't, I haven't been talking about it because, you know, the weather changed. But I got a lot of fruit trees out there. I'm down to about 53 now because I gave some away to my daughter. But I'm going to have a lot of fruit in the years to come, okay? Yeah, it's a lot. You don't get that much juice out of that little bitty stuff. But it does work. It really does work. Okay, so everybody understand water bath candy? Now, a couple things I need to tell you about water bath candy. If you're canning, let's say, jelly, and the jelly is hot, you don't take hot jelly and put it in a water bath canner that the water is cold or room temperature. You need to put hot things in hot water, cold things in cold water, room temperature things in room temperature water. If you want your jars to crack, Take something real hot and then put it in a cold canner. It'll crack immediately. Another thing you have to do when you water bath can, you have to make sure that you debubble it. And that's the spatula that you put down and you get all the little air bubbles, pockets out. Okay? And when you water bath can, you want to do it just finger tight. You don't want to screw the, the lid, the jar, rings. Mm, mm. You don't want to do all that. That'll make them crack. Because you have to have somewhere for that gas to escape. Especially when you're pressure canning. Okay? When you remove the jars out of the canner, you want to put them on a butcher block or some towels. And don't start pressing in. Somebody mentioned something about that. They press in to make once a month or something. That's fine. But don't do that when you're canning. Because you don't want to get a, 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 a false seal. And... This is debatable. Some people leave the rings on. Some people take them off. Rings on, rings off. I take mine off, and I'm going to tell you why. The reason why I take the rings off is because you still can have a false seal. I've done it. It was something that I can't soup. It was real heavy. And I left the rings on. I went to go get a jar out and opened it up, and it didn't go poof when you... You know, lift that pot up, that that uh, lid up. Got to get up one more time and show you something. I'm going to open these because I'm going to eat some tomorrow. These were canned in June 2019. Can you see that? June 2019. Beautiful sweet peppers. See at the bottom where you got your black pepper and you, you shake it up. Now, I'm going to move this out the way. And this is a lid releaser. So you just take it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to wipe this lid off because it's a little dusty. With a little alcohol. And this is what I've been using with my products, but then you're gonna take this right here. Come on, a little lid. Did y'all hear it? I should have been quiet, but it was like a look. And you can look on here and you see nothing. This is a piece of um, seasoning where I shook it up. Red pepper flake. <sighs> Smells so good. 
It's the it's this I, this is one of my favorite things to can too. You can take this and you can do like a, a baked chicken, um, anything that you want to slice it up. Put this in there with it, and you got a meal. You can pour it over rice, or you could do a a, a, a a cold salad. But the point I want to make in, about this is. When you have that ring on there, you have a, a, a false sense of security. But when you take the jar ring off and you turn it upside down and nothing leaks out of it, you know it's sealed. Now, you don't do that upside down test immediately after you can. You have to wait at least, at least 24 hours. Okay, I'm gonna put this right here because I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. And then after I open up a jar of something like that, I can leave it in my refrigerator for three months and I put on a plastic cap. And you can get those from Amazon too. Okay, let's see if we got any questions. I got the uh, lid releaser at Amazon. And I also have one of those uh, under uh, kitchen cabinet mounts of any type of jar, fingernail polish, anything like that. Oh, Satisha so says she, she must have watched my collard greens canning video at least 20 times. The first time she canned some greens. Oh, good. Brenda says she heard the little... Shasha heard it. Black Girl Dirt heard it. Yeah, and I don't bore... I, not to put my mother or my grandmother down... But they boiled the hell out of food till it was just mush. I don't cook like that anymore. You know, we cooked uh, salt pork, fat back, ham hocks. Um, We're we doing better nowadays, guys. We're learning to cook with turkey wings and necks and... and Legs and stuff like that. So we have all that grease swimming around everywhere. Can you water can beets? Yes, you can if you do them the, with pickles. And I have a video on that. If you go to my um, playlist. Stacy, I googled that and it says you could have, you would have to water for six hours. Okay, you all must be talking about how can you just water bath something. And you have to also keep the water at boiling. So if they say six hours, you got to have other cans of pot water or boiling to put it back into the pot. You just can't put in tap water and then it cool back down and bring it to a boil again. Those ladies knew what they were doing. They had pots all over the stove and they just kept adding and adding and adding. Well, we don't have to work like that anymore. The sewing machine you used to have to do like this and spin it and spin it. Now we just... Y'all know what I'm saying. We, we, technology uh, is smarter and more advanced, so we don't have to do all that old-fashioned stuff. If that's what you want to do, let me recommend a group for you. It's called Canning Rebels on Facebook, R-E-B-E-L-S, Canning Rebels. They do all the stuff that people say you're not supposed to do. And one of their rules for you to be in the group is you cannot come in there and preach to the choir about that something that they're doing wrong. So if that's what they, you best you have to put that playlist on there. So if that's what you want to do, thank you, my prima culture garden. If that's what you want to do, I'm not knocking nobody. But uh, one day it's not going to work. Dry soup recipes? No, I don't do a lot of uh, dry soups. 
but there are a lot of them that are on YouTube, okay, Janice? There are a lot of them on there. Um, I prefer to have mine all cooked and in the jar, and all I will have to do is just heat and serve. Okay, so any questions about water bath canning? Remember, do not put it in the canner if you're going to use a pot or anything that you have. Make sure you put a towel at the bottom. Make sure if you're doing jelly or anything hot, make sure that your water is hot that you're putting them in too. Uh, I'm going to get your question for a minute, share it all in a minute. And then you want to make sure that you only water bath acidic things and that you follow the guidelines at the National Center for Home Preservation or any of the Ball's books. And remember, somebody's going to win this one tonight. I don't even know how you're going to win it, but I'm going to give it away. And uh, no meat and no vegetables unless you pickle it. And if you pickling vegetables, you must follow the recipe to a T. And I do not recommend doubling recipes. Anybody ever made a cake or jelly and they double the recipe and it doesn't turn out right? I don't do that. Some of you might have more experience than me and can do it. I'm not saying it can't be done, but no, I want to be one of the 21st century guru gurus. Right on, Blacker Than Dirt. Mm -mm. So Sharon wants to know, can you leave the meat in the... No, 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 no. No, Sharon, this is pickled with vinegar and alcohol. Alcohol. Vinegar and olive oil. See that thing you said at the moment? So this is pickled. You can leave pickles in the refrigerator after you open it up. Now, if you just cook some chicken, say you pressure can some chicken and you open it up, you can't put it in the refrigerator for three months. It's going to be molded. Okay? Only things that are pickled, like relished, relish, beets, chow chow, something like that. Jelly. Okay? But not meats, tuna, pork chops. After three months in the jar, no. But that was a very good question because I can see why you say that because I said after you open up the jar, you can leave it in the refrigerator. But I should have said because, I should have prefaced it by saying because this is pickled with half vinegar and half extra virgin olive oil, you can leave this in the refrigerator. Now, there are some pickled meats, you know, Back in the day, they made, uh, what is that? Pickled pig feet? Yes, you could leave that into the refrigerator. Okay? All right. After pressure canning, can you reuse jars once you pop the seal and eat the food? Bless too, yes. You use these over and over. I don't use this. I don't use the lids over and over. I use the rings over and over until they get rusty and then I throw them away. But I buy the lids all the time. And that's why I put the date, the month, and the year on my lids so I know it's been used and I won't use it again. But I know people who use them successfully over and over again. But this is the thing. They don't make them like they used to. These rings, now this is a good one. This is one of the older ones. You see how wide that rim is? Now they're real thin. And on the jar, for cares who bought out, balls bought out care and they merged, they, they tell you that the leaves are only good for 18 months. That's to keep you from suing them. But you used to can leave them in there for years. Hey, Tommy, glad you're doing better. Yes, endure until the end. She said she used them for vacuum seal. Yes, ma'am. I agree with you. Okay. So, any more questions about water bath canning? Now, let's move on to the big dogs. Pressure canning. And we talked about different types of pressure canning. Pressure canning is a little bit more intense and some people are intimidated or scared about it because it builds up pressure. But it's not like the old timey, uh, like I said previously, the old pressure canners that didn't have a gauge on them and you didn't know how much pressure was in there. 
And so you release the um, the valve and let out a little pressure at a time or turned it off. You don't have to do that anymore. It has a gear gauge there that goes from zero to about 20. And most people live in an altitude where they, they have that gear gauge at about 11. Read your manufacturer's manual. I'm only can tell you from what my experience with Presto and with All American Canner. Okay? So once that pressure uh, gear gauge uh, reaches the amount of pressure for your altitude, then you put your weight on it. And then you process it for the amount of minutes that the recipe calls for, either from the National Center for Home Preservation or Balls or any other reputable uh, book. But for certain, meats must be pressure canned. I don't care if it's one piece of bacon in your baked beans. It must be pressure canned for 90 minutes in a quart and 75 minutes in a jar. Everybody with me? So if you have soup and you only diced up one gizzard and put it in there, you have to pressure can that soup for the time of the meat. Now, let's say you're making vegetable soup and you have different times for different vegetables and you don't have a recipe. And this is what is so wonderful about pressure canning is you can make up your own recipe. As long as you keep it in your mind that you've got to pressure can the whole jar for the amount of time for meat, if it has meat in it, and then if it's mixed vegetables and fruit, because tomatoes is a fruit, and a lot of us like tomatoes in our soup and stews, right? You're going to pressure can the soup without meat for the longest amount of time of the vegetables that are in there. So if carrots take a little bit more longer to pressure can than corn, I'm not, I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying you would go with that time, okay? But if it has meat, then you go with meat. You go, girl. <laughs> Intimidated by the pressure can, but you can learn. Yes, Yankee sister, I like how you are uh, motivating her to do it. So right now, Endure says she's just doing water bath jellies and jams. But once you have some soup that's pressure canned, you wanna, you're going to want to keep doing it. Best yet, I know your husband said, baby, this is good. It tastes fresh. And that just makes you just swell up with pride and make you want to make some more for your man. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, when your family, can you steam canned cabbage? Okay, who's asking me this? Did you just get here, Nubia? Nubia, did you just come in? I'm mad that you asking me that question. Because you remember I said all vegetables have to be pressure canned unless it's pickled. So if you're asking me without pickling, unless it's pickled, it has to go back to the acid, uh, alkaline side. So if it's not pickled, does that answer it? <laughs> Food tastes so good after canning. Yes. Christmas, if my daughter said, Mama, can you cook some fresh greens? I said, oh, sure. I'm going to go right in there and take a jar out. They're not going to know the difference. P. Smith Garden, my son just came and got him jars of potatoes and greens and peppers. They go shopping at your house. Yes. <laughs> What I do is I take food to uh, my son, Andre, because his kids love my, especially my pasta sauce with meat. So I take him some by the barbershop. I don't go in. I haven't been in since the pandemic. And I'll even take the noodles to him, too. And then their mom will cook it, and then she'll send me a picture them sitting at the table eating us the, the spaghetti. And it just makes me feel so good because I can't see them right now. On that home standard, you can do it. You can do it. Don't think that you guys cannot do it. So getting back to the pressure canning, all vegetables that are not pickled must be pressure canned 
all meat must be pressure canned. Go to the National Center for Home Preservation. Read up on what you're not supposed to pressure can. Then you can watch some videos, and if you see other people doing it and you want to try it, have at it. But I don't do it. Now, let's say we just cold pack our chicken. And when I do a seminar uh, uh, live with somebody uh, canning, I always do chicken. Because if they can cold pack chicken, they can cold pack anything. Making sure, yes, you can, can. Yes, Miss Homestead Art, I love her. She uh, said, yes, you can, can. So, we put the cold chicken in the jars. Now, let me back up. Balls now say you don't have to sterilize your jars for pressure canning or sanitizing. They say you don't have to do that anymore. I do. I don't let them boil, boil, boil. I just put them in boiling water and lift them out. Okay? And then I cold pack the chicken after they cooled off. And I put it in. And you have to press down and pack it really good. Because you're going to find that it's going to make its own juice. And it's going to have a lot of room in there. And then I'm going to show you. I can't really show you. I think I can. Hmm. It's like whole cloves of garlic in here. See right there? Can you see that? It's right there. You could put that in there. You could put onion. You could put whatever you want. Because remember, you're not following the jelly recipe to the tea for water bath candy. Now you, you, you becoming the chef. And you put in there what you and your family like to eat and like to taste. If you like me and you want some red peppers in there, you put them in there, okay? Then with your chicken, I put bone broth in mine. You can make your own broth with a bouillon cube if you're not restricted with uh, your sodium intake like I am. You can put your salt in there and whatever you want, okay? And then you're going to fill it up, but you're going to go beyond, below this rim. When you water bath candy, you can go all the way up to here. When you're doing meat that's going to make some, some of its own juice, I recommend that you go about right here. And then you're going to go in and get your little air bubbles out, right? And then it's cold packed, so you're going to load up your canner, and then you're going to pour your water in. Then you're going to put your top on, and you're going to let it boil, right? And you're going to see that pressure coming out of that little... Uh, what do you call it? Somebody corrected me tonight. I don't remember. Y'all know what I'm talking about when you put the weight on. And then you're going to see your gear gauge go all the way up to the, the amount of altitude that, you're, that you live in. And most of it's a, it's a thousand. And, and once that little um, weight stops sputtering and spinning around, then you time it. It'll be at that point where you go vent. Thank you. You're going to have to lower your heat a little bit. And once you do it a couple of times, I, I remember specifically when I first time I used the all American canner, I uh, took a picture to where the, uh, with my phone, a picture to where I had, I have gas to where I had it set. And then I took another picture of where, when I stabilized it and it stayed the same pressure. I took a picture. But after you do, I know I know it's three. You, you just know after you do it so much, you don't even think about it. Uh, sugar cane, there are some Instant Pots that have canning features in them. I don't know anything about them, so I don't give my approval or disapproval on it. I did that one night, and I got a 13-page email from somebody that said that they you can do it. So I don't, I don't know nothing about them. And Tia said the same thing. She's not comfortable. Yeah, it's like my son-in-law, pressure gauge. You know, I think I'm going to write that down. And um, my son-in-law told me, you know, they, okay, they got printers with fax machines in them, and they got the scanners where you can um, scan stuff and photocopies. He said, but... Those things don't last. This is what he does for a living. He wires hospitals and blah, blah, blah. 
He's a project manager now. So he worked from home to everybody else what to do. But he's right. Every time I bought one of them three and ones and four and one things, that they, they just the components start going out off. Out. So I don't believe in all these things that gadgets that you can buy and do two or three or four different things. That's just me. But who am I? Okay. Sylvia, I write. When I write it down, I can remember. You know, I'm an author. And uh, both of my books, I had an editor. But sometimes when I would be reading passages, when I used to do my book signings, I would start reading them the way I wrote them, as opposed to when they came in and grammatically corrected me. And put the comma, she walked into the room, comma, using the da -da -da, saunter of a da 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 da. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes when I write stuff down, if I write it down wrong, I'm gonna remember it wrong. <laughs> but you will put it into your memory. Okay. Mine don't have a gauge either, just a jigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're all with me. So now we got the, the canner. We, we debubbled, we filled it up, we put our jar on, finger tight, don't screw it real, real tight. We put it in the canner, it's cold packed, so we put cold water in, or tepid water. And No, we passed all that. We had the right gauge, right, and the weight. And then we stabilized it so it stayed at where we wanted it to be for the full 90 minutes that we were processing it. In my classes, I like to do now just 75 minutes pints because sometimes it takes too long, over three hours, if you're not ready. Yeah, I've had a couple people that weren't ready, but I'm not going to call the names out best yet. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she said, are you going to have classes again? Yeah, we'll start up in January, okay? And, uh, yeah, and, and so then you're going to turn your heat off, off your stove, electric, whatever you're working with, and you're just going to go watch TV for a half an hour. You're going to come back, and then you're going to look at your gear gauge, and it's going to be all the way over at zero. You take your weight off. It comes out a little bit at a time. And then you're going to take your jar lifter, and you're going to take the jars and don't let them touch. Don't bump them into each other when you're taking them out of the jar, of the, the canner. And you sit them down. You don't slap them together because they will crack. You set one down and you set one with some space where you can see in between it, okay? And after you're taking them all out, then you're going to put a towel over them that keeps the heat in. And you're going to start hearing them pop. Sometimes you can hear them popping in the canner when the pressure is going down. But don't go and do this that night. That's a false seal, okay? And then so you wait 24 hours, take the rims off, turn, I can't do this because it's got, I, uh, I unsealed it. And you're gonna turn it upside down to see if anything leaking. And then you're gonna take your little warm soapy dish water and wash the whole jar off all around here. Cause if you can have, if you have something that oozed out of there and dried up in there, that can make a false seal too. Mm -hmm. And then you just put the date on. I just put the month in the year and keep it moving. One thing in particular I need to tell you, I use pickling salt, Himalaya salt or any other one of those, but not your regular salt, table salt that has iodine and other things in it that keeps it from clunking, clumping. And that's why it looks so pretty. Now, there's probably no salt in here at all. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know if I put a pinch in there or not. But I do have pickling salt. That some things I'll put just a pinch. But, you know, it'll turn cloudy. Oh, I didn't say that. It'll turn cloudy and ugly looking if you use regular iodine salt. You will, Lolita. Just keep doing it. She says, I have not figured out when to turn my electric stove down to level out the pressure for the cooking time. And somebody said, do you stack your canned goods? No, ma'am. 
No man, and I've seen people have beautiful pictures on Facebook and Instagram with those cans stacked. But I don't say anything because you know you start wars and stuff like that. Some people I've been doing it for thirty years, and you keep on doing it. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you, okay? All right. I've learned something new. Been carrying it for 10 years. I've never heard of putting a towel over the jars. Makes sense. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. Yeah. We all learn things. Okay. Did I miss anybody's question? Okay. Now, I have not talked to anybody. I love Bess yet. I love Antia. But I've never talked to her over the phone. I've never been on Messenger. With anybody, I've had some communication with uh, Cynthia, and that's about business. So I'm getting ready to give this canning book away, and the reason why I said that is because I don't want people to think, "Oh, she gave it to who she wanted to give it to." But really, I don't really care about what people think. I'm at the age now. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. I really don't care. Either they believe you or they don't. But what I, I, I'm, I'm just prefacing it by saying that I'm going to write a number down between one and a hundred. And I have never, I haven't rewritten it. So I'm just going to get some brilliant paper right here. I have my garbage can right here for paper. And I'm folding it up. And then right here on the inside, I'm going to write my number between 1 and 100. Nobody don't give me a number yet. Don't give me a number yet. Oh, see, Myra, you already did it. See, 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 see. Okay, I'm playing. Okay, Myra and Kaylee, I'm not going to take those numbers. And since you all put those numbers down, uh, the lowest number is 53. I'm going to take the number from 1 to 50. Nobody put a number in until I tell you. Now, if you came into the live late, and the reason why you can tell you late because it'll start off with a commercial, and then you have to skip it. What shows up on your screen is not what may show up on my screen. So the first person who gets the closest number to it on my end is who will get the candy book, okay? Is that fair, everybody? Because if you came in late, you're not, you're gonna be way behind everybody else. But I wanna get a couple of questions before I put this down because somebody said, if you put the jar inside of a plastic bin with a lid, you can stack them. Okay, Sylvia. I don't really talk about other people that much when uh, they, they, if they say something different than what, I, what I've said. But let me just say this. I always preface my answers by what I don't do. Okay? But I think you're saying like stackable crates. There's, all, there's a way to do things. Okay? And Lolita, I start turning my heat down when the pressure gets close. On my electric stove, just keep monitoring and you will hit the right setting. That is a very good idea, Yankee sister. And Antia said, you can stack the bins, but not the jars. That is correct. I think that's what Sylvia is trying to say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because you can have different shelves. You know what I mean? Until you said, okay. All right. I, I, don't, I don't like to get uh, do controversy. Y'all know me. I avoid drama. I act like I don't even see it <laughs> on the news feed. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't get into drama. Okay. Here we go. Going to 1 to 50, right? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't start putting the numbers down until I write the number down, fold it up, and hold it. Now, some of y'all are starting to put, put numbers in here already. And I want to be fair. So somebody's put another, another. I'm playing. You can set them. Okay. All right. I'm going to write the number down.
Now, you cannot see it. You can begin putting your numbers down between 1 and 50. And I'm giving you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Pencils down or fingers down. Posh Co is the last person that I'm taking. Y'all keep on putting them in, but it's not going to count. Posh Co is the last person when I say it's, it's over. So somebody's still putting them in. Now I'm going to go all the way back up. I think I saw who did it. Oh, man. Okay, somebody came real close. The first person. Oh, no, we have a winner. I'm going to stop at Posh. I'm going back just to make sure. Winner of the kick is D.S. Nubia, 49. Psych. Don't be mad. <laughs> Don't be mad. <laughs> she said, you wrong for that. <laughs> uh, some of you all went over. Poshko took her number out. You know, putting another one in. Okay, that's it. The winner is... I shouldn't have jabbed on you like that. Deborah White. She said 42, and the number is... Can y'all see that 43? Now, I'm going to be honest with you all. Poshko, what was your number? What was your original number? Where's Poshko? So I called her, number, her name out. That's the year your mother was born. Is Poshko still in here? I don't know what happened. I think she left. Because I'm going to tell you the honest God truth. I forgot the number. Okay, I can see what her number is. She retracted it. I can pull it out. No, I can't. No, it wasn't Poshko. It was D.S. Nubia. That's who I said. It was D.S. Nubia. Remember, isn't that what I said, guys? Somebody say yes or no. That's who I said, D.S. Nubia. Come on now. You all help me. Yes, yes, yes. I thought I had written down 49. And that's what she said. And so I called her out the window. Then I said, oh, no. Oh, hell. It's 43. So I'm going to give you a book, too. You're going to get a book. You get a card. You get a card. No. <laughs> but I'm going to give it to uh, 43 and 49. And that. That 43 person was Ms. 
DS Nubia. And who is the other person? Y'all better help me. Y'all know I can't remember all of this. <laughs> But my moderators, I'm Tia. Bitch, yet? <laughs> Bitch, yet said, oh. Who was that person that said 49? It's going so fast. What's it, 43? Okay, I'm, I'm confused. Moderators, tell me who won. I'm confused. It was Deborah White. Thank you, who said 42. Thank you, Angela's Garden Sense. I told y'all that's old age. It's not it's not <laughs> Alzheimer's. Deborah White. Thank you, Lady Al. Thank you. you. Thank you, Auntie. So I have DS Nubia and Deborah White. If you would email me at best yet, oh Auntie, put the email address down. And I'm going to send my moderators, Aunt Tia, and best yet, I'm going to send you one of my hand sanitizers. I think I have you guys' this address. So that's four gifts I got to put in the mail tomorrow. Let's give everybody a hand. This, this hand sanitizer is the bomb.com. Uh, I put it in a uh, large one for me. I'm going to show you how much I use. You don't need a whole lot because it has 99.9% .9 alcohol in it, and it has aloe vera gel, and it has vitamin E, and it has aloe vera oil, and it keeps your hands silky smooth. I don't know if you all remember. If you all remember, I used to have all that shed in here. That's when I was using all that bleach when the pandemic first hit. But now I don't have that anymore. The name of this book that I'm giving away is called Preserving, the Blue, the Bones Blue Book of Preserving. Over 500 recipes. Okay? This was the only one that I wanted that I didn't have. And Lady Sapphire found it. And, I, and it was reasonable. And I said, can you give me three? Because I'm going to give one to my daughter. But now I'm giving because I messed up the, the contest. I'm going to give two of these away. Now she just have to use mine. And look in here, guys. It even has stuff on dehydrating. Who is that asking me about soup? Okay? So you can dehydrate and then layer it. And there's the group on Facebook that I'm a member of, but I really don't do a lot of dehydrating. Except for onions, garlic, stuff like that. Uh, turmeric, ginger. Not that much ginger. But uh, I do do those few. But I said I was going to do some more. But don't that look good? Ooh, that look good. Okay, so I'll get these out in the mail. It's going to be snail mail, book mail. Uh, so you're not going to get them right away. And I should have your email address. When you email me, when you email me, D.S. Nubia and Deborah White, I'll email you a tracking number for you to get it. Oh, it may not be a, yeah, it'll be a tracking number. I have to spend a little more money. The hand sanitizer is the cure for COVID. Yes, ma'am. It's strong. But it still has, don't have, and my hands are not dry. See the sheen on my hands? Because it got a lot of vitamin E on it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week. I hope I helped you some with uh, pressure canning. Remember, I will be here next week on the 14th, but I'm going to take the 21st off. Okay? And then I'll be back on the 28th at 7 o'clock Central Time. Love only you all. And you know that God loves you too. Good night, everybody. I love you. I love you.
Bye.